Hello, Year Twos. Right, yesterday when we read the BFG, we were reading Chapter 9. And that was all about the blood bottler. And Sophie came very, very close to being eaten, can you remember? When she slid inside the snozcumber and the blood bottler ate a big chunk of it. But luckily, because the snozcumber was so disgusting, she managed to jump free. Then we found out at the end of the chapter, they were going to try and find a way to get rid of all the giants. And Sophie said that she would help the BFG do it. Today, we're going to read chapter 10. And chapter 10 is called Frob Scottle and Whiz Poppers. I quite like the sound of that. By now, Sophie was beginning to feel not only extremely hungry, but very thirsty as well. Had she been at home, she would have finished her breakfast long ago. Are you sure there's nothing else to eat round here except these disgusting, smelly snozcumbers? She asked. Not even a fizzwinkle, answered the big friendly giant. In that case, please may I have a little water, she said. Water? The, said the BFG, frowning mightily. What is water? We drink it, Sophie said. What do you drink? Frobscottle, announced the BFG. All giants is drinking Frobscottle. Is it as nasty as your snozcumbers? Sophie asked. Nasty, cried the BFG. Never is it nasty. Frobscottle is sweet and jubbly. He got up from his chair and went to the second huge cupboard. He opened it and took out a glass bottle that must have been six feet tall. The liquid inside it was pale green and the bottle was half full. Here is Frog Scottle, he cried, holding the bottle up, proud and high, as though it contained some rare wine. Deluptuous, fizzy Frog Scottle, he shouted. He gave it a shake and the green stuff began to fizz like mad. But look, the fizzing, it's fizzing the wrong way, Sophie cried. And indeed it was. The bubbles, instead of travelling upwards and bursting at the surface, were shooting downwards and bursting at the bottom. A pale green frothy fizz was forming at the bottom of the bottle. What on earth is you meaning the wrong way? said the BFG. In our fizzy drink, Sophie said, the bubbles go up and burst at the top. <laughs> Upwards is the wrong way, cried the BFG. You mustn't ever be having the bubbles going upwards. That's the most flush-bunking rubbish I is ever hearing. Why do you say that? Sophie asked. You is asking me why? cried the BFG, waving the enormous bottle around as though he were conducting an orchestra. You is actually meaning to tell me you cannot see why it is a scrotty mistake to have the bubbles flying upwards instead of down. You said it was flush bunking. Now you say it's scrotty. Which is it? Sophie asked. Both, cried the BFG. It is a flush bunking and scrotty mistake to let the bubbles go upwards. If you can't see why, you must be as quacky as a duck hound. By Ringo, your head must be so full of frog squinkers and buzz wangles. I is frittered if I know how you can think of think at all. Why shouldn't the bubbles go upwards, Sophie asked. Ah, I will explain, said the BFG. But tell me first, what name is you calling your frob scottle by? Well, one is Coke, Sophie said. Another is Pepsi. There's lots of them. And the bubbles is all going up. They all go up, Sophie said. Catastrophe. Do you know what? That's another tricky word that I can't, I can't say. Cat as trust. Cat. I'm going to leave that one out. Cried the BFG. Going up, going bubbles is a cat. Catastrophous. Catastrophous. Disastrophe. Oh. Will you please tell me why, Sophie said. If you listen carefully, I will try to explain, said the BFG. But your brain is so full of bug, bug whiffles, I doubt you will ever understand. I'll do my best, Sophie said patiently. Very well, then. When you is drinking this cokey drink of yours, 
for the BFG. It is going straight down into your tummy. Is that right? Or is it left? It's right, Sophie said. And the bubbles is also going into your tummy, right or left? Right again, Sophie said. And the bubbles is fizzing upwards, of course, Sophie said. Which means, said the BFG, that they will all come swish whiffling up your throat and out of your mouth and make a thousand belchy burp. Mm, that is often true, Sophie said. But what's wrong with a little burp every now and again? It's sort of fun. Burping is filthsome, the BFG said. Us giants is never doing it. But with your drink, Sophie said, what was it you called it? Frobscottle, said the BFG. With Frobscottle, Sophie said, the bubbles in your tummy will be going downwards and that could have a far nastier result. Why nastier? asked the BFG, frowning. Because, Sophie said, blushing a little, if they go down instead of up, they'll be coming out of you somewhere else with an even louder and ruder noise. <gasps> a whiz popper, cried the BFG, beaming at her. Us giants is making whiz poppers all the time. Whiz popping is a sign of happiness. It is music in our ears. You surely is not telling me that a little whiz popping is forbidden among human beings. It's, it's considered extremely rude, Sophie said. But you is whiz popping if you not. Now and then, asked the BFG. Everyone is whiz popping, if that's what you call it, Sophie said. Kings and queens are whiz popping, presidents are whiz popping, glamorous film stars are whiz popping, little babies are whiz popping. But where I come from, it is not polite to talk about it. Redunculous, said the BFG. If everyone is making whiz poppers, then why not talk about it? We is now having a squiggle of this delicious frog scottle, and you will see the happy result. The BFG took the bottle, shook the bottle vigorously. The pale green stuff fizzed and bubbled. He removed the cork and took a tremendous gurgling squig. <gasps> it's glummy, he cried. I love it. For a few moments, the big friendly giant stood quite still, and a look of absolute ecstasy began to spread over his long, wrinkly face. Then... Suddenly, the heavens opened and he let fly with a series of the loudest and rudest noises Sophie had ever heard in her life. They reverberated around the walls of the cave like thunder and the glass jars rattled on their shelves. But most astonishing of all, the force of the explosions actually lifted the enormous giant clear off his feet like a rocket. Whoopee! he cried when he came down to earth again. Now that! is whiz popping for you. Sophie burst out laughing. She couldn't help it. Have some yourself, cried the BFG, tipping the neck of the enormous bottle towards her. Mm, don't you have a cup? Sophie said. No cups, only bottle. Sophie opened her mouth and very gently the BFG tipped the bottle forward and poured some of the fabulous frog scuttle down her throat. And oh gosh, how delicious it was. It was sweet and refreshing. It tasted of vanilla and cream and with just the faintest trace of raspberries on the edge of the flavour. And the bubbles were wonderful. So if you could actually feel them bursting and bursting all over her tummy, it was an amazing sensation. It felt as though hundreds of tiny people were dancing a jig inside her and tickling her with their toes. It was lovely. Just wait, said the BFG, flapping his ears. Sophie could hear, could feel the bubbles travelling lower and lower down her tummy and then suddenly, inevitably, the explosion came. The trumpet sounded and she too made the walls of the cavern ring with the sound of music and thunder. <gasps> Bravo! shouted the BFG, raving the bottle. You is very good for a beginner. Now, let's have some more. That is the end of our chapter today. It was a slightly shorter one. The next chapter, which we're going to be reading after the holidays, is chapter 11, Journey to a Dream Country. And I think that one is going to be a really good one. Thank you so much for joining me again for another story time. And I will see you all soon. Bye.